Ice Ice what? Whoa, whoa, baby, poke it out, whoa. poke it out, poke it out. What's up, everyone? So it's Wednesday, which means that the game happened two days ago, and it already feels like it happened an eternity ago. Uh, I'm very happy with with the outcome of the Indianapolis Colts game. Like, dude, it felt amazing. It felt amazing to see our team play like the New Orleans Saints again. Maybe you guys disagree with me that we haven't been playing like ourselves the the entire year, but seeing a burst like that is is exactly what we needed heading into the end of the season to the final home stretch, soon to be the playoffs. We're now going into week 16, which means this is State of the Saints. Heading into week 16, we got a, a decent amount of stuff to cover. I tried to make sure not to overfill this episode because there is a lot to talk about, but I'll save some of the topics for uh, the streams later this week that I'm going to do because um, it's, it's better to have stuff to talk about then, ask you guys questions, have you guys respond, and all of that good stuff. So, State of the Saints heading into week 16. A lot of interesting stuff has happened in the last couple of days. I'm not going to be talking about injuries in this video. I'm going to save that for the predictions video, which I will be doing with Big Boy Jinx TV, so be looking out for that. But, uh, there's still a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, as you guys all know, we made the Janoris Jenkins move. There's playoff seeding we should discuss, and I want to talk about the offense peaking late. But before then, I'm going to ask, if you're new, which most of you aren't, I think a lot of the people that watch my videos are returning subscribers, but if you are new, go ahead and feel free to hit the subscribe button. If not, that's okay. But if you would like to, that would appreciate it very much to help me a ton. But let's go ahead and get into the video. So the first thing I'd like to discuss is the claim of Janoris Jenkins. Now, I made a whole video on this, which... Of course, because it was breaking news, got like 4,000 views, so I appreciate everybody who clicked on that video. It means a ton to me, but I'm not a film guy, and which might sound bad to some of you, but I'm not paying $500 for the film package to where you can watch the video and, and, and you know draw arrows on the screen and stuff like that. So I don't get access to film super quick, but after watching highlights and highlights and highlights and trying to like figure out how good Janoris Jenkins is, I've come back with a very pleasing result. Janoris Jenkins is a true NFL number one corner, and if you don't think he is, that's your problem, but I 100% believe that he is, based off of pure statistics, veteran mindsets, and a lot of good qualities he has that this team does not. The first thing I'd like to discuss is Janoris Jenkins. You can see him in the picture. He's locking down his target with his eyeballs. That's something that's very important when playing corner. It's something that he's learned, of course, from being a 31-year-old NFL veteran. Uh, he tracks his wide receiver with his eyes at all times, makes eye contact with him, makes sure he knows just by looking at the receiver where the ball is, when the ball is going to come, and that puts him in perfect position to turn around and make a play, which is another reason Janoris has four interceptions on the year, which is more by far than any Saints corner we have. It's insane. Like, the way that he uses his eyes to track and completely figure out where the ball is coming, where when it's coming, the, the speed in which it's coming, it's insane, but that's what he does just by using his eyes. If you watch the Saints, you know that some players struggle to use that to their advantage. Eli Apple, on occasion, uh, he'll look exclusively at the player, but ignore all signs of the player showing that the ball is coming, which prompts him to freak out, flail his arms, and likely draw a pass interference penalty. P.J. Williams does the exact same thing, so having a guy like Janoris Jenkins who uses those eyes to his advantage is going to help us a ton. Like I said, this dude was a number one corner in New York. He was doing a very good job locking down his matchups, except for one that got the better of him, which was Mike Evans. But now he's going to be guarding number two wide receivers all the time if we do put him on the perimeter. That's going to be a big step up in his performance and in our secondary's performance. I'm extremely excited about this. Uh, P.J. Williams is only specifically good in the slot. Eli Apple is only specifically good on the border. So having a guy like Janoris Jenkins who has proven that he can play on the border and in the slot, it gives us so much versatility. The packages Sean Payton can run with this team now is ridiculous. This dude 
is going to be something in New Orleans. It's going to be like Eli Apple, but gone right this time. Eli Apple's been having a fantastic season. I will support Eli Apple to the day I die. For some reason, I just really like the dude. But the last three-game stretch has been absolutely horrible for Eli Apple, and I'm hoping that he can bounce back. Maybe this can be what pushes him over the edge. Someone made the comparison that we don't need veteran leadership because of what happened with Kurt Coleman. Now, Janoris Jenkins can still play football. That's the difference right there. Uh, Kurt Coleman couldn't. He was there simply for veteran presence, not for veteran leadership. Janoris Jenkins can lead the secondary, be that voice of experience that the secondary so desperately needs. Von Bell's young. Marcus Williams is young. Marshawn Lattimore's young. Eli Apple's young. P.J. Williams is young. I think P.J. Williams is the oldest at like 25, 26, something like that. Uh, Eli Apple's 23, 24 actually. Um, what Marshawn Lattimore is like 22, 23 as well. There are so many young pieces in this defense that have just been drafted the past couple of years. The Saints need somebody like this to coach them up. Cameron Jordan's been doing it with the defensive line. Now we have somebody like this to do it with our secondary. It means more than a lot of people think. Veteran presence is insane. Not only is he veter does he have veteran presence, he's very good statistically. General Earth Jenkins has 54 tackles, 4 interceptions, let me compare the uh, the completion percentage allowed by Saints corners to Janoris Jenkins. Janoris Jenkins has allowed 53.8% of the passes gone his way to be completed. Eli Apple has allowed 62.7 passes going his way to be completed. Marshawn Lattimore, the bright spot, allowing 51.9% of his passes to be completed. And P.J. Williams allowing a staggering, absolutely horrible 68.3% of passes going his way to be completed. That's almost 70%. That's insane. So we need this dude. Janoris Jenkins, looking at his stats, he's very similar to Marshawn Lattimore. Him and Marshawn Lattimore stats are almost, almost identical, except for Janoris Jenkins has allowed 300 more yards, but he's playing in the New York Giants system. He's coming out of a bad situation. This dude is going to be amazing. I'm letting you guys know right now, Janoris Jenkins, look for him to make some plays. Now, the next thing I'd like to talk about, of course, exi exi uh, besides, excuse me, the Jackrabbit, is the playoff seating. Now, the playoff seating is a very, very, very interesting situation here okay um the it, it goes like this number one seattle at 11 and 3 the saints hold the tiebreaker over them number two green bay 11 and 3 they hold that spot over the saints because of conference record number three the saints at 11 and 3 so three 11 and 3 teams number four is dallas seven and seven number five is the san francisco 49ers at 11 and three uh they have the tiebreaker over the saints so if they get into the top three again we're not going to be ahead of them and number six is the Vikings at 10 and 4. I'm going to give you guys a rooting guide for this week so you know who to root for. Root for the Saints over Titans, of course. We need to win out. Root for the Vikings over Packers, which is realistic since the Vikings are playing at home. But Kirk Cousins has a terrible record on Monday Night Football, so don't count on it, but root for it. The Rams over the 49ers and the Cardinals over the Seahawks. But if the Rams beat the 49ers... You're going to want... No, 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 wait, wait. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. So the Rams, if they beat the 49ers, root for the Cardinals over the Seahawks. And if the Sea, That game confuses me. If the Rams win, you want the Seahawks to win. Yeah, yeah. If the Rams win, you want the Seahawks to win. Because if the Seahawks and 49ers become tied, the 49ers automatically get placed over them because of the tiebreakers. So, yeah. It's a very difficult rooting guide to understand. The playoffs has been blowing my mind this year. It's been so close, heavily contested, and, oh, uh, why are the Seahawks in front of the Saints and the Saints have the tiebreaker? Yeah, there's so much stuff going on within this playoffs, but definitely root for the Vikings over Packers because the ways for the New Orleans Saints to get first seed this week, the Saints need to win, the Packers need to lose, and the Seahawks need to win. The, or the Saints can win, the Packers can lose, the 49ers can lose, and the Seahawks can lose, and the Saints will still regain first seed possession. So, it's very, uh, root for the Packers to lose, root for the Minnesota Vikings, even though I know you guys don't like to, root for the Minnesota Vikings. I just wanted to give a little bit of, of view into the playoffs. I know it's confusing. I'm going to make a whole video on it where I'm going to thoroughly do research. I kind of just clicked the playoff machine a couple of times, so I'm sure there are more ways for the Saints to get first seed, and maybe one of those was incorrect to one of you guys. Let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, I definitely need to toy around with the playoff machine more, do a little bit more research, and definitely see 
what exactly the playoff standings are going to be and how the Saints could arch their way up that. So, with all that being said, the last thing I'd like to talk about is the fact that our offense is peaking late. I cannot under I cannot sit here and, and value to you how beautiful the fact that our offense is peaking late is. The problem with last year, the New Orleans Saints peaked early, blowing out the Bengals, blowing out everybody in their path, and we ended up getting figured out. They said, okay, just quadruple cover Michael Thomas, they got nobody else. Well, now, the problem with that is not only do we have Michael Thomas, we have Jared Cook, Traquan Smith's been getting more involved, Ted Ginn Jr. is pretty reliable at this point in time, uh, we have Latavius, a very strong runner, Alvin Kamara can get himself involved whenever he feels like it. The offense is a lot more weapons, and we're peaking late. Let me read you this real quick. So, the five games before our last five games went like this. The offense put up 31 versus Tampa, 13 versus Jacksonville, 36 versus Chicago, 31 versus Arizona, and 9 versus Atlanta. Now, of course, Teddy Bridgewater was the quarterback at that time for three of those games, but that doesn't matter. That really doesn't. Uh, our offense is our offense. And we put up a total of 120 points during that five-game span. Now, not only did we improve offensively as long uh, as, as as far as points scored goes, we're doing it against better defenses. So the last five games after those games that I just read to you, the New Orleans Saints put up 34 versus Tampa, 34 versus Carolina, 26 for us versus Atlanta. 46 versus the 49ers and their number one ranked defense in the NFL, and 34 versus the Indianapolis Colts, and that gives us a total of 174 points. So we've scored 54 points more than the last five game span, this five game span. And literally, there has only been one game in which the New Orleans Saints have not scored at least 34 points in this last five game stretch which was versus atlanta on a short week in atlanta so i'll give it a pass and they just held the the 49ers bottlenecked i don't the offense is peaking late this is exactly what i wanted to see from the new orleans saints save your best play for the end of the year get through the playoffs or through the regular season and when you see that it's time to go get going that's exactly what they're doing and i couldn't be more appreciative of it so let me know what you guys think of the Saints down below. What position do you think we're in? State of the Saints heading into Week 16. I think the Saints really, they don't control their own destiny here, but we can do as much as we can to make sure that we get that first seed. Beat the Titans, beat the Panthers, go into the playoffs, hope a couple teams lose. I think we're in a really good position. We've been a very good road team this year, a very, very, very strong road team this year. Two of our three losses came at home. We only lost once on the road, which was when Drew Brees got injured in the Coliseum versus the Rams, so can't really say that's a loss. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think the state of the Saints is, and I'll see you boys in the next one. Adios. Falling like Barkley, wrist so sparkly, internet surfing, feel like I Carly.